Okay, I'm gonna start. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to our presentation on cloud computing in action. So before I begin, I just want to let you guys know that we are, so Anna and myself are presenting today, and we are presenting on behalf of the company that we work for, which is CloudReach. So for those of you who are not aware of um, what CloudReach is, CloudReach is a cloud consulting company. And what we do is we help various clients ranging from finance, financial institutes to the public, um, public services. And what we do is we help them build infrastructure essentially in the cloud, or we help them optimize or maintain their existing infrastructure. So um, myself, who am I? I'm Zarina, my name is Zarina Mirin, and I am a cloud developer at CloudReach, and I specialize mostly within Microsoft Azure as the chosen um, cloud vendor that I use at CloudReach. And I have a background in security and network computing. Um, if you're interested, by the way, in getting to learn more around cloud or anything related to technology. I also have a YouTube channel called Zarina's Net. So you can check that out. And um, yeah, that's it from me, Anna. Do you yeah. want to introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. So my name is Anna. I am uh, Zarina's colleague. So I've been working for CloudReach for almost two years now. Um, I am as well a cloud developer. Um, and um, I have a very different background than uh, Zarina. I'm going to tell you more about it later. Uh, so I, I was actually a, a student at UCL myself. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, so I guess that uh, um, we can go to the next slide. Yeah. So for this presentation, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Slido, uh, but we would like to do a bit of a live poll. Um, so if you can access from your phone or uh, computer or anything you want, uh, the website www.slido.do uh, and you enter the code uh, CloudReach, you're going to be uh, redirected to a page where you're going to um, uh, basically answer a question, which is, uh, do you know what cloud computing is? Um, so we're just going um, to just let to see, uh, let's see, let's say the what's uh, the knowledge that you have already about cloud computing. So at the end, we're just gonna um, see uh, a little bit the results of the poll before going for some uh, Q&A. Of course, you can do this while the presentation is going on, so. No, just um, we'll wait a bit, I guess. Yeah, no problem. I guess it gives us all a feel of the audience regarding what everyone yeah. um, knows about cloud. I don't know how many people are here, 20, or, yeah, more or less. So I can see that, uh, yeah, 14 people have already answered. Did you look at the, um, the results? Yes, yes, so it's live. Um, I can show this at the end if you like, uh, or I can just give you the, the results. <laughs> Okay, so is everyone? Yeah. I think so because it's 18 people have answered. So apart from me and you, oh, that's great. Yeah, cool. 
Okay, so what is the agenda for today? So as the topic is cloud computing in action, maybe some of you don't know what cloud is. So we're going to start off by explaining what exactly is cloud and um, the different types of cloud that are out there because there's many variations of cloud. Um, we will also explain why do we need cloud? Why is it important? Which is, a, it is important because <laughs> we're here giving the presentation. And we'll cover some great examples um, of how cloud can be used. Once the theory is out of the way, we will show you a nice demo of how to build something in the cloud. And we will be focusing on a web application. Um, and that will be done manually. However, we don't do things manually in our company. We code, we automate our infrastructure that we build in the cloud. So we'll share with you some tools. Um, if you're interested in learning about coding and how to automate infrastructure in the cloud. And then finally, we will wrap up with sharing, well, Anna will be sharing with you her journey. And the reason why we wanted to do that is because uh, if you are interested in either making a career change, um, maybe you're not studying computing and you want to get involved in, in cloud, in particular, um, or you really are interested in cloud and you just want to go into a career um, straight away and that's what you're studying, um, well, Anna can share that with you. We will also provide, um, at the end, there will be a 10, to, I think, 10 to 15 minute Q&A. So if you have any questions for either Anna or myself, um, feel free to uh, ask questions. Okay. So, Okay, so I, so I want to start off by explaining what is cloud. And I think a great way to explain what is cloud is by discussing what, how, what did we use before cloud, right? And um, a great way to explain that is by first discussing what is infrastructure. So let's take an example to illustrate that. Um, let's take a grocery store, an online grocery store. Um, such as Tesco, for instance. You're at home and you don't really want to go out eat outside to buy your groceries. Instead, you want to go on your phone and um, go online and order it. Now, in order for you to go on your phone and access that website, of course, they the Tesco website needs to be available. It needs to be hosted and it's not there by, by magic. There's a lot of work that's involved. And um, what we refer to that as is infrastructure. So I'm going to explain to you the components, uh, the infrastructure components uh, that are involved here to make that happen. So I'll start off by um, demonstrating or explaining the end-to-end -end flow. So a customer would go on to their phone and they would access a website. So we call this the front end. And the front end is essentially the, the web page that you access over the internet with all the buttons, the images, um, and the graphical user interface, essentially. Now that is hosted on a virtual machine. So we have a front end, which has your website, and that's on a virtual machine. Now, in order for you to understand how many products are available on that website, such as, I don't know, maybe you're, you're buying um, some cucumbers and in your local store, you, there's like not, there's, there's about two available, right? And you, you needed three, I don't know, I'm just giving a random example. Now, that information would be held upon a database and we refer to that as the back end. Now that database is another piece of infrastructure held upon a virtual machine or a server. And so you have your front end, which is your web page, your website with your web pages, and you have your back end, which is your database that holds all of the data necessary to the customer and also the, um, the inventory of products. Now both of those virtual machines need to 
communicate. And this is where we bring in more infrastructure, more components, such as networking. And that would involve your routers and your switches and some other stuff. So routing would involve how does the customer access the website and then how does that website connect to the database? Now, one other piece of uh, infrastructure that I want to explain that's crucial um, is the load balancer. So, you know, at the start of COVID-19, uh, the COVID situation, everyone was going crazy online and buying products, uh, buying uh, their groceries online instead of going to the, the store. Now, that is one example of a situation where you would get loads of customers trying to access a server that may go down. Another example would probably be like Black Friday, for instance, where everyone's trying to get a good sale. Now, the problem here is that if you have, say, hundreds or 200,000 200, worth of people accessing your website and it's only hosted on one machine, the chances are that machine's going to go down. So you're going to probably need a bunch of other machines. But the question now is, how does that customer access all of, uh, how does that, that customer know which machine to uh, connect to? So that is where the load balancer comes into play. And the load balancer sits in front of those virtual machines and um, literally knows where to uh, direct the traffic from the new customers to like which virtual machines. So say customer, um, the a random customer comes in and they can't access the first virtual machine because it's overloaded with customers. So the load balancer would say, hey, you can go to virtual machine number two. So what I'm trying to say here really is that there are a lot of components involved to make a system happen. And this is just a few pieces of components. There's a lot more than that. Now, traditionally, um, and still companies do this. And a lot of companies are trying not to do this now. They're trying to move away from this. And this is why we have cloud. So what they would do is they would have a data center. And a data center is, it's basically a warehouse which holds all of these devices, all of these components. And the process is usually like this. Okay, I have a new application, I need to host it on a server, and that server needs to access this server and blah, blah, blah. So they would go away and they would need to make the orders for the machines that they need. And then someone would come and deliver those machines. And then somebody else would need to come and install and plug them in with the right cables. And then later down the line, that device may expire. Well, it will, it reaches what's known as the end of life. And so it would need to be upgraded. Now, all of this involves a lot of time because you're waiting on people, but also you have to, um, yeah, you need to configure these things as well. You need to pay for it and you might not even be using it. And um, this, this involves a lot of money. So this is what it would traditionally be like. But nowadays we have something called the cloud. And what is the cloud? Okay, so spoiler alert, it's, there's no real cloud here, okay? <laughs> the idea is that a bunch of vendors are hosting all of this infrastructure for you in their own data center, which means you don't have to worry about purchasing some land to host your, your servers. You don't have to worry about you know, um, maintaining all of your devices uh, physically or having resources to go there and maintain it. I've worked at data centers, so I really know about this crazy stuff, this crazy world. And so what you can do now is just go onto your laptop, access the cloud um, provider that you want to access through a web URL. It's kind of like Amazon Prime, 
you access the website, you register for a subscription. And once you have that subscription, you can access the services and the services are the same components that we spoke about, such as the virtual machines, the, the, the databases, the load balances, the routing that you want to do. So the, for the, v, well, I don't want to get too technical, but a VPN basically to allow you to connect to another uh, data center, for instance. And all of this you can do from accessing the cloud portal online over the internet, because it's public cloud. So you just go on your phone, access it, and you could start spinning these things up immediately. And of course, some of these things are free, like just like Amazon Prime, but some of these things you have to pay for. But the great thing is you don't have to wait for someone to come over and uh, deliver the device that you then have to install and maintain yourself. So, let me just move this out of the way. I don't even know, I don't even know if you guys can see this. Um, okay, so what are the benefits? I've kind of gone through some of the benefits already, but I'll just go over them again. First of all, you can access it from anywhere. I mean, this is great because you can access it from your phone, from your laptop, as long as you have an uh, internet connection, really. The second, which is the best, it's on demand. So whenever you need something, you can just spin it up. And that's great because like I said, if we go back to the example around the whole uh, Black Friday, when you get more and more users, if you don't have the capacity, if you don't have the machines available, you have to create rules such as rate limiting rules. And that means if um, a certain amount of people, um, if, if it reaches a particular threshold, then you have to you know, stop people from accessing your server. Whereas here, you can just um, you know, spin up more machines really, really quickly. And when you don't need them, no problem. You could just decommission them. Whereas in a data center, you're still paying for those servers. And another great benefit is that you can tell straight away how much money um, you are spending on these particular uh, infrastructure components. So now we kind of know what is cloud and what happened before cloud. So why, why did cloud happen? You're probably wondering what are some of the cloud providers that I was referring to. So there are quite a lot out there, but these are the main cloud providers that not only we work with, but also many companies around the world use. So the first is Amazon Web Services. Um, they were the first ones to come out. I don't know if anyone knows about the, these cloud providers. The, normally we call them the MAG, um, excluding Alibaba. But AWS, so Amazon, we also have Google Cloud. Now, the thing with Google Cloud is they've been around a lot longer than, well, two years before Microsoft Azure, but it's only recently that they've become more popular. Um, and then there's Alibaba. Again, not many people use Alibaba, so maybe you don't, you're not so aware of Alibaba Cloud, but it's another one that's starting to peak. And then we have Microsoft Azure, which is the provider that we are going to use, well, Anna is going to use today to show you guys how to create a web app in the cloud. So on this slide are some of the companies that we work with. So CloudReach works with, um, where we are helping them either build their uh, cloud landing zone. Um, and the idea, when I say cloud landing zone, it's basically a blueprint of um, what they need. So the architecture and everything they need so that once the infrastructure is built, the blueprint is built for them, we can then help them migrate uh, the applications that they have hosted in their own data center to the cloud. So the, like I said, we work with various sectors. This is just some of the, uh, some examples from the, uh, some of our financial clients. 
Okay. Over to you, Anna. Um, so, as uh, Zarina said, basically to build in the cloud, we have uh, um, a very huge uh, choice, uh, very um, uh, a number of options uh, that are that are really really huge. The type of cloud the services that we can uh, select depends, of course, on uh, what the needs of uh, our organization are. But we can say that we can group. Uh, the available services that are in the cloud um, into three main categories, which are um, IIS, so infrastructure uh, as a service, PaaS, platform as a service, and uh, software as a service, or SaaS. Um, each of these uh, categories basically represent a different uh, combination between uh, uh, the um, easy of use and setup of the service, so it's manageability basically, and the amount of control that a user has on those services. So for example, uh, we have, for, ex for, um, for instance, that uh, IIS, uh, infrastructure as a service, is the one that is the most similar to a typical data center environment. So basically those warehouses that Zarina was uh, uh, telling you about. In this case, uh, you are uh, responsible for configuring and managing the infrastructure. So the user has to do a lot to make this work. Uh, a different thing is a platform as a service, which um, is a service where some infrastructure components are actually abstracted. And the service may include some applications that are managed, for instance, by a cloud provider, for example, Microsoft. Um, finally, software as a service is a fully functional application that is completely hosted in the cloud by the cloud provider. So basically, you are not responsible for anything but using that service. And the cloud provider is the one that is responsible for everything that the service entails. Uh, so next slide. Thank you. Um, so basically, the key concept that you have to take away from this is uh, understanding uh, that the infrastructure as a service are the most similar to on-premises servers. So the, the servers, the physical servers that you have uh, in your data centers. And uh, even though you have a great control on them, you have less manageability, of course, because they're much um, less friendly to use and you have to do a lot to configure them. Uh, platform as a service are easier to set up than infrastructure as a service, but uh, definitely give you less control over the resources because some of them are actually um, managed by the cloud provider. While the software as a service is just there for you to use uh, and you don't have to worry about anything that happens uh, in the underlying infrastructure. So uh, with this said, let's see how we can build uh, something in the cloud. In this case, today we're going to use uh, Microsoft Azure. So we're going to basically ask, access the, 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 the web page of uh, Microsoft Azure portal. Uh, and we're going to create a very simple web application using our platform as a service service from Microsoft Azure. Um, a little bit of uh, introduction so you can actually understand how easy uh, it is to set this up on the cloud rather than doing it uh, in a traditional scenario. So in a traditional scenario, you as a developer would have uh, to be uh, uh, responsible for developing the application. So basically write the code that creates the application for you. But also you will have to be responsible for configuring the, the web servers, for example, taking care of uh, what the security settings are. Um, when you decide to host your web application in something like uh, Azure Web App, which is the service that you're gonna see today, uh, Azure takes care of a lot of uh, plumbing for you, let's say. So what you can see here, the thing that is called service fabric, basically it's a, a, a thing, a service that keeps uh, the server and operating system secure, performant and available for you. So you don't have to worry about uh, having a machine that is ready for you to be used or uh, having the correct operating system or um, is my server secure or not? You don't have to worry about any of this. So all you have to do as a developer is create the code for your application and just load it physically, <laughs> literally in, uh, uh, onto the web app on the Azure portal. So let's uh, see how this is done. So I think I'm going to share my screen. I don't know if I need to uh, get OK. 
No, I cannot share it. I need to um, drop off and rejoin. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, cool. Great. Okay, so uh, I hope this is big enough, otherwise I can make it bigger for you. But uh, basically, this is how the uh, Azure portal looks like. So it's basically, as you can see, a very simple uh, um, web, uh, web page. Uh, and it's very user friendly. So um, it's really very intuitive. So anything that you can, uh, you, can, uh, you can possibly do, it's very well explained and it's quite easy to uh, understand where to click to perform the action that you want to perform. Um, so um, let's try to create a web application with the web app. So uh, simple as that, create a resource. This is what we want to do. Um, and we can just uh, either type to look for stuff, whatever we want, or we can just see some popular items that uh, I probably have used a lot. So they're here. Uh, as you can see, web app is just uh, in front of me. So I can click on that. And uh, yes, I have to fill in some information. Uh, so I'm going to try to explain as much as possible what these uh, information are. Um, so first of all, um, all the, the mandatory information are, of course, uh, um, uh, identified by this uh, uh, cute little red star. So to do anything in the cloud, uh, you first need to have a subscription. So you have to have you have to have a membership to that, uh, that um, cloud provider and you have to have a, a subscription, which is basically, let's say, a sort of your account on the cloud. Um, then you can define in this subscription um, a resource group. So nothing in the cloud exists without a resource group. Uh, and a resource group is a sort of a, a grouping um, structure that contains um, a bunch of uh, um, infrastructure uh, instances. Uh, they can be virtual machines, they can be uh, networks, uh, they can be load balances, storages, database, whatever. And usually you use a resource group to, um, let's say, um, keep things that are related together. So in my case, I can either reuse an existing one or I just can create one. For this case, I'm going to create one. I'm gonna create uh, with a name of my choice. I'm gonna give a name to my uh, application. I'm gonna call it an hour bath. And of course, it, you see it's very easy to use because uh, even if you give a, a wrong name that is already taken, you can just change it. Let's see, okay, this is fine. Uh, I'm just gonna give a, a, another bunch of uh, um, uh, information, for example, like the language I want my uh, application to be in. And something very interesting is the region. Um, so you can see that we have a bunch of regions that are all over uh, the world. So definitely we could uh, uh, connect to any uh, data center that is um, even very far away from us. Usually we try to keep it simple. So we try to use servers that are kind of close to us to have less uh, downtime. So in this case, I would, I would go for UK South, but I could deploy this application in Central US, uh, Australia, Asia, whatever I want. Uh, then I'm going to select basically the kind of uh, um, pricing tier that I want to um, to go for for this uh, for this um, uh, web application. You can see that we have many different options. Uh, of course, it depends on uh, the characteristic of your web application, the amount of money you're ready to spend. So I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to get the uh, the least expensive, and then. Uh, Okay, so in this case, 
uh, you have also some options that you can uh, um, select to monitor what's happening with your application, uh, to monitor uh, if your application is healthy or not, if something is wrong. So in this case, I'm just gonna keep it simple. Uh, I'm just gonna go for no uh, application insights. So I don't want any information, extra information. You can give tags to your uh, resources. This works with anything. Uh, so that, for example, uh, imagine that you have many different environments, you have uh, the sales department that uses the cloud, uh, you have uh, the architecture department that uses the cloud, you can give different taxes so that you know each resource which, uh, to which uh, group um, belongs, basically. So it's easy even to keep track of what's happening and how your resources have, uh, are deployed and used. So once this is done. I'm just going to wait for uh, the validation. So it looks like everything is fine. So I can just click and create my application. So you see the deployment is in progress. I can monitor what's happening. Shouldn't take long. Yeah, okay, so we have a web application. So the, this literally took five minutes. So I can go to uh, my resource. And uh, again, here you have a bunch of information. You can monitor uh, the access of uh, your information, the amount of data that goes in, the amount of data that goes out, the, the amount of requests that user, uh, users uh, make to this application. Uh, and uh, so let's see if this actually works. So you can see that um, the uh, web app um, service from Azure created a URL for us uh, with the name of the application that I selected. So if I click on this, yeah. Yes, so this is the default page, let's say, uh, for uh, the web application. What we can do, there is a very nice tool here, which is actually uh, kind of in, uh, it's a new development in Azure. It's uh, the, yes, the editor, cool. Which is basically going to bring you to the raw page. Uh, so the page that we have just visualized here, uh, we're gonna see it in the HTML format. There we go. Yeah, so basically this page, this web page was built through this code. So imagine we have our own code uh, for this uh, example, I'm just gonna take a hello world uh, um, web page. I can just go here, put in my code, it's gonna be automatically saved. And if I go back here and uh, I access uh, the URL again, I'm gonna see my hello world page. Um, so this shows you how easy it is to uh, uh, build stuff in the cloud. So it literally takes a few minutes and you have a perfectly working web application, of course, very simple, uh, but uh, there is always space for improvement and it is very easy to start with the cloud as well because as I said, the portal is extremely um, user-friendly and extremely intuitive. So um, if, you, if, you can, um, if you're very interested in the cloud, the, my suggestion is, would be to get a, a, an account uh, pay as you go. So try to spend the, the, the least month, amount of money as possible and just play around with it because it's, it's actually fun. <laughs> and it's really easy to understand how things work. Uh, so I can give you back the uh, sharing. Okay, uh, so in this example, of course, I created everything manually from the portal. And this is fine because uh, what we created was actually something very basic and small. But uh, what if we had a much more complex infrastructure? In this case, we would definitely not want to have to create every single bit manually on the portal, we would go nuts. 
But fortunately, to avoid this, we use uh, something that is called infrastructure as code or uh, IAC, which basically involves uh, using a, a kind of a descriptive language uh, to automate provisioning of the infrastructure and manage uh, its configuration. Um, you can think about infrastructure as code as three different steps, basically. So you describe your infrastructure uh, writing a piece of source code, which looks a bit like a text file, but where you have all the, infra the information about how the infrastructure should look like. Then you can ingest this uh, uh, source code into an automation tool uh, or uh, any service that uh, can go and create the infrastructure uh, you, create, you just described in the source code. And uh, the, the best thing is that once you have this bunch of code, that describe uh, uh, your infrastructure, you can create and recreate the same environment entirely on the cloud by reusing the same code. So basically, uh, ISC is a, a very uh, effective way to create and manage infrastructure, also because you can uh, uh, pair it with the using repository. So maybe you have heard of uh, GitHub, for example, where you can keep track of the changes uh, you make uh, in your code uh, through version control. There are so many tools out there that uh, we can use to implement infrastructure as code. And the best thing is that most of them are open source. For example, one of the most used is Terraform. Uh, and uh, also the beauty of it is that uh, a lot of these tools are actually uh, available for any cloud provider. So you can basically learn how to create infrastructure, for example, with Terraform. And uh, no matter what cloud provider you're using, you're always going to be able to create the infrastructure. So I give the word to Zarina. Okay, so thank, thank you for that. So at the moment, just to give a, a recap, we understand now, hopefully, <laughs> what is cloud and the different types of cloud that are out there, why we need cloud. And we gave some examples of, um, you know, cloud, um, some clients that we help um, with cloud. Um, with, well, Anna has shown you how to build a web, app, web application using the Microsoft Azure provider and she's explained some of the tools that are out there um, to automate this rather than do it manually in, in the portal. So now I'm going to hand it over well, back to Anna and she's going to share with you guys her journey to, um, well, her cloud career journey. Okay, so uh, as I said, my um path is uh, very different from uh, the arenas. Um, so I started back in Italy uh, with a master's in civil engineering. Uh, and then I moved to London for my PhD, which I, I took in uh, at UCL. So exactly like you guys. And uh, after that, I switched completely. So I started the journey, my journey to the cloud. And uh, I joined CloudReach two years ago. And I met a bunch of great uh, people, um, great friends as well. Um, and uh, the best part was that um, not all of us uh, were actually um, into the cloud back then. So we were just curious, but we didn't know much about it. But uh, CloudRidge has a great uh, sort of graduate program. We call it, fa we call it Fast Track. Uh, where basically we do a very intensive three months uh, to learn as much as possible about the cloud. So starting from very simple stuff, uh, going and building up our skills. Uh, and uh, I, I fell in love with this. So it's a uh, it's great, uh, great topic. And uh, what, what I really find uh, um, amazing is that even though my background was nothing but uh, computer science or uh, cloud, cloud computing or anything like that, um, it was so easy to uh, to switch and it was so easy to actually enjoy this journey and learn as much as possible. Um, so of course, I'm not the only one who had a uh, path like this uh, in CloudRish. Uh, there are any sort of uh, people, the diversity is, is really great. 
but if you want to know more, we have a blog. Uh, so the link is uh, just on the slide with uh, um, where you can actually read about other people, not just myself, uh, about their journeys, about what they do in CloudReach, how they live their, their uh, everyday life. So even if you're interested in knowing what a cloud developer does on a daily basis, you can just go there and read about it and uh, get your own uh, ideas about it. Okay, so thank you guys for listening. Um, and now we'll hand it over to you if you have any questions. Um, and if you don't want to go off mute, um, you can just ask questions in the chat. I'll stop sharing. I'm going to start off the questions. It was a very, very clear presentation. Thank you so much. Um, I have a, I have a quick question because it was all very clear on how everything is structured. My only kind of blurry area is um, the database part. So I'm wondering if you, when you're creating the web app, can you choose the strut, like, are you designing the architecture of your database at the same time, or is the provider doing it for you, or how does that work? Uh, Zarina, you want to go for it? No, it is fine. You can, you can go for that since okay, you so, covered oh, web apps. <laughs> yes, you can uh, definitely uh, do that. So um, the web app, um, uh, service that I show you is just one way. So um, if you want, you can go for something more, uh, um, more com I mean, complex, let's say, so you can create what, what I've done in the past as well. Um, using infrastructure as code, I created front end, back end. So I was creating the database itself and I was uh, making the connection, the network connection between the front end and the back end. So this is, uh, uh, let's say, what we usually do. Uh, so the service, the platform as a, as a service is just to show you how easy it is to create anything in the cloud, but definitely uh, if I were to create a more, uh, let's say, complex uh, web application, I would go for infrastructure as code. So I would build my own infrastructure in, uh, infrastructure in the cloud and I would take care of the database as well, which could be SQL or anything available on uh, the provider, basically. Great, thank you. Um, should I answer Christina's question? Sure. So, what would you recommend? Okay, so the great thing nowadays with the, the popular cloud vendors that we discussed in our presentation, such as Microsoft Azure, um, Amazon Web Services, as well as an example, is they have intra um they have um, basic certifications, right? So ranging all the way up to professional certifications as well within cloud. So I know in Microsoft Azure, they have Azure fundamentals. And what that covers is um, not only the introduction to cloud concepts, but also um, Azure um, concepts as well. So that's quite useful. And Amazon Web Services have one as well. I think it's called Cloud Practitioner. I'll find the links um, and I'll put it in the chat, but they're very, they're very helpful. I know a lot of people that are also, so the thing with technology is it's always changing, right? And in the tech industry, those that were working in the dinosaur ages are now moving towards the cloud. And so they're learning more about the cloud as well. And so they take certifications like, like this. Um, I'll just find it and I'll put it in the, in the chat. But there's also um, some other companies that have tutorials on cloud as well. Um, what's the one we use? I think it's Cloud Guru, right? Yeah, Cloud Guru, Guru or Wiz Labs. Uh... Uh, yeah, that, yeah, Cloud Guru is the, the best, I think. And there's another one called Coursera, ah, Coursera um, yes. which is um, Google's uh, website, I guess, where they you can actually follow tutorials and they give you free credits to access the Google portal where you can purchase and have a play around with 
um, the resources there. I'll, I'll put this in the link I'll, while you answer the next question. It's for you. Okay. Uh, so how did I come across cloud computing after my PhD? Uh, yes. Okay. So I decided I, by the end of my PhD that uh, I wanted to do something in IT because um, uh, my PhD was uh, nothing related to computer science, honestly. Uh, but I had to code a little bit in the end of my PhD to get some results from a software that was not reading anything but Python. So basically I had to um, do a little bit of that. And I thought that was a kind of a good idea to go into IT, but I didn't want to uh, just do coding because uh, anyway, I didn't have that much of experience in that area. And uh, I actually joined a meetup um, that Cloudridge organized uh, back in 2019. And uh, I learned about the cloud. So I thought there was a very good compromise between uh, um, being uh, kind of interested in IT, uh, having a little bit of um, coding knowledge, uh, but also not just wanting to do uh, coding every day, the whole day. So the cloud uh, allows you to have a, a very, um, it gives you a wide choice because uh, you can definitely, for example, uh, be more interested in the architecture. So you think about all the services, you think about how to link them, how to create your infrastructure, or you can just be a developer, like for example, me and uh, Zarina, but still it's very, uh, uh, changes a lot also. So it is very, um, very dynamic field. So that's how I got into cloud computing. I just uh, met people at CloudReach. I thought it was a uh, very cool, um, area of IT and uh, I, I decided to join and to start with the graduate program. And also, I'm not sure if Bella is on this call, um, but we can give you her um, contact details. I guess you have it, right? Um, yeah, you can share it. And if you're interested in also maybe joining the same scheme that Anna joined, if this, I'm sure they're still doing it, right? Yeah, then you can not, uh, not 2020 because, yeah. Well, you can find out from her um, and she'll put you on the list and let you know what may come around. Yeah, um, definitely I'll share Belen's detail. Anything? Any more questions? <laughs> okay, I guess that's it for today. Thank you, thank you so much for the presentation. I think it was very, very clear even for non-tech people at all. So that was that was great from you guys. I know it's it's really hard. Um, pleasure to have you, and uh, and yeah, have a have a great evening and. Uh, to all of the participants, I'll see you tomorrow morning. We have a workshop tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, take care.